Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, if you weren't in my talk this morning, I'm Oren Wright. I'm a research scientist here at the SEI. And if you were in the talk this morning, then it's just bad luck. You have to listen to me twice. So when it comes to AI, the single most important question that the defense community can ask today is how does AI learn structure? What I mean by structure is the relationships among data. How is one piece of data related to another? Uh, Dina Baer talked yesterday about how in commercial applications, we often get to pick structure, and we don't typically have that luxury when it comes to defense applications. If we want to integrate prior knowledge, if we want to model uncertainty, if we want to model or navigate the complex dependencies you have in modern data, if we want to navigate uh, differing data velocities or multimodal data, we need some way of representing structure, and we need a way to learn that structure. So it turns out we have a pretty good way of representing structure, and that's with graphs. And graphs are everywhere. So everything from state machines to molecular networks to social networks, all of these can be represented with graphs. And graphs give us a way to explicitly and mathematically represent this complex information. This is a, a map, a semantic map of the World Wide Web. So think about what kind of questions we can ask of this data. Can I detect a DDoS attack before it happens? What's the right way to model information propagation? Things like that. And looking at rich data like this, that's such a, a large data set, we might be inclined to think that machine learning and even deep learning in particular is the right way to deal with data like this. But machine learning today is typically constrained to regular uniform data structures like images and time series. Um, these, these are data structures where there is some Euclidean uh, properties that deep learning can exploit. But we're worried about this much wider world of irregular data structures. The uh, typical way a deep learner is applied to a problem like this is to simply steamroll the data, to flatten it out, to vectorize it, and we throw away all that, inf that structural information that is important to the problem. And we often very, make very wrong relation, relational assumptions. So convolutional neural networks in particular have revolutionized domains like computer vision, but they fall in this left column here of regular data structures. And so our research asks, how do we extend convolutional neural networks to that column on the right? How do we learn over that irregular data structure with something like a convolutional neural network? How do we learn graph structured data? Luckily for us, one of the world experts in graph signal processing works right here at CMU. Professor Jose Mora uh, works in the CMU ECE department. He's the current president of the IEEE. And uh, we've been collaborating with him over the last year on answering this question of how do you do convolutional neural networks on graph structured data? So the convolutional kernel that's powering all of these great CNNs today is actually quite simple. You're combining some local region, some neighborhood in your image with a learned filter, and that's uh, giving you some higher level representation of your information. You do that across the entire image, and you come up with this higher level representation. So we would expect a graph convolution to do something similar. We aggregate information across some neighborhood in our graph and have some function that can combine that information into a higher level representation. So at this point, it's probably worth asking why CNNs in the first place, why are they so useful? We know that they get such great results, but what, what is driving these results? So the first thing is that they have a fixed number of parameters. That means you have a low memory footprint and a low computational cost, at least relative to other deep learning techniques. You have a local kernel, which lets you build hierarchies of information. 
and you have these very nice spatial invariance properties. This means that a cat in the top is the same as a cat in the bottom. It's going to get recognized in the same way. And all of this together lets you do things like real-time object recognition. This is a, a technology that people would have said uh, was impossible just a decade ago. So any graph convolution hopefully brings with it some of these really attractive properties. So we can do for irregular data structures what is already being done for regular data structures. So I have one slide of math. I'm not going to do a full derivation of graph convolutional neural networks because generally audiences are better awake. But I want to communicate the core ideas. So if we consider some discrete time series, we can represent that as a vector. And any operator, a shift, a convolution, etc., can be a matrix that's, that multiplies by that vector. So in this case, we have a shift operator, and the time-shifted signal is just that shift multiplied by the original vector. Everyone with me so far? Great. This is just classical DSP. But because we've drawn that time series as a graph, we're thinking about it like a graph. And we might notice that that shift matrix C plays a dual role. It's the same as an adjacency matrix. So it's this combination of the shift operator from DSP and the adjacency matrix from graph theory, which lets us build a graph signal processing. And that's the, the key idea of this slide. So if you only remember one thing from this slide, remember that. So because we have def defined the shift for any graph, we can now take some arbitrary graph, take the data that reside on that graph, and we will know what a graph-shifted signal looks like. That sounds a little arcane. Why do we care about a graph-shifted signal? Well, if you think back to your undergraduate DSP course, I'm sure you all remember that any linear shift invariant filter can be represented as a polynomial of shifts. So with just the adjacency matrix, we can define an operation like graph convolution. And with graph convolution defined, we're off to the races. We have graph convolutional neural networks. So now that we have those graph convolutional neural networks, there are two classes of problems that we're concerned with. The first is node classification. So suppose we have some graph we want to know what some of the unlabeled nodes are using only labeled nodes as our information. So we want to take uh, labeled nodes and use that to predict some unlabeled node. Uh, a popular example of this is citation networks. So uh, things like uh, physics papers, math papers, etc., form this citation network, the connections or correspond to the citations between papers. Some of these are labeled. Can we label the others? A more salient problem might be, can we detect bots or malicious actors on a social network? The second problem is graph classification. This is analogous to the image classification problem you often see in computer vision. I have pictures of cats. I have pictures of dogs. I get to train on those. Can I look at some new picture and know if it's a cat or a dog? In this case, we're doing the same thing, but with graphs. I get labeled graphs, and I look at some new, heretofore unseen graph, and I try to label that. So an example here might be uh, detecting carcinogens by looking at chemical networks, or looking at call graphs and trying to detect malware. Being able to think about graphs in this way and learn in this way lets us ask really exotic questions uh, and work in areas uh, like drug discovery. So going back to that original question, how does AI learn structure? Well, we know graphs are a really good way to represent structure. And one way to learn over that structure is with these graph convolutional neural networks. This is a very small piece, mind you, of one layer of what is a very big problem that we should be concerned about. It involves machine learning techniques like what I've talked about today but it also involves computational primitives and hardware, like what Scott McMillan talked about this morning. It is a very deep cross-disciplinary problem. Um, you can get implement implementations excuse me, today of graph convolutional neural networks. 
You can uh, download tools like PyTorch Geometric, which we've contributed to. Uh, Professor Mora's students will be presenting some of our results at the Asilomar Signal Processing Conference next month, uh, and we uh, plan to have some papers published early next year. And that's all I have today. Thank you for listening. I think there's time for questions. Any questions? Okay, that was easy. Thank you, everyone.